Hello and welcome to Skiselevision. Today we are going to be videotaping one of our Say Hello to Artfelt kits. This project is our coffee cozy, or you could also call it a coffee cup, or if you wish you could actually make a cuff that you wear as a cuff on your wrist, such as this. This one's a little bit too big for me. I would want to felt it more, make it a little bit tighter, but they can be a really great little cuff, get a great button, do some beading on it if you like, and you can keep your wrists warm in winter or just make a fashion statement. Okay, let's get started on our coffee cozies, which are going to look like this. In your kit, you're going to find just about everything that you need to make your, your coffee cozy. We've got roving, and in this case, we have pencil roving. And pencil roving is simply a roving that has been drafted out to be about the width of the pencil, as you can see. And we use this beautiful multicolored roving, which gives us a chance to do some wonderful design work with it. You're also going to find two barbed needles. These needles, they're felting needles, and they're very sharp, thus they have a little cork on the end. Be very careful. They do hurt if you poke yourself. They have little barbs on them, and these little barbs are what's going to carry the roving through the art felt paper. So where is our paper? It's usually inside of our instructions. This paper, do not throw it out when you open it up. Some people think, oh, what's this? Tissue, let's get rid of it. No, you want to keep this paper. This is your art felt paper. And your paper is going to be pre-cut to a certain extent. This piece is actually going to be large enough to make two cuffs. So you're going to want to cut it in half. And I noticed that it was folded very nicely in half, so I don't even think I need to take a ruler to cut it. I'm just going to cut it in half with my scissors, and I'm just using very interesting scissors here. These are actually for rug hooking, um, but they're very sharp and they work very well. So I'm going to cut my paper, and although we call it a paper, it is more like a pellon, I must say. There you go. Slide right through it. And now we have two separate pieces so we can make two separate cuffs. I'm going to start with one piece and I'm going to show you how to make what we call a mitered corner cuff. If you knit, you know what a mitered corner is. It basically means that your uh, materials go around a corner as you're working them. If we want to use this and do, say, three mitered corners, we have 12 inches here. So if we take 12 and divide it by three, it's four inches. So we're going to mark our paper at the four inch and the eight inch mark. Notice I'm using a pencil. Pencils are great. Sharpies are great. Any other kind of pen, not good. What will happen is when you do the final felting, if it's not a Sharpie or a pencil, the ink can easily run. And whatever color it is, say you used red, it could turn some of your materials pink. So you always want to use pencil or Sharpie. And you can write and draw whatever you want on your piece as long as you use a pencil or a Sharpie. So we're going to draw a straight line here. If you're a perfectionist, and actually, since we're doing this on camera, I will use a Sharpie so you can see it a little bit better. Um, if you're a perfectionist, you can you know, measure out four inches from the top and bottom on each one so your lines are perfectly straight. But I'm not a perfectionist, so we're not going to. <laughs> so to do a mitered corner, let's see what kind of colors we have here. And we're going to start out with, let's see here. Um, I think we'll start out with this blue green here. We've got a nice piece here. The colors will vary a little bit. Um, and I'm actually going to start with the, the center section. Now I have two barbed needles, and I'm going to use them both while I'm working with them. The reason we actually give you two is in case you break one, you have another one to work with. So if you don't break one, you have two to work with, which is awfully nice. I'm going to use this to hold my paper and my roving into the board when I start my mitered corner. Now I'm going to use the other one, and right along this paper edge, I'm going to tack in right there. Then I'm going to Tuck that corner nice, really nice, and I'm going to come down on this line right here to this part here. And a mitered corner, I'm going to go over the point right in here, and I'm going to tack this in. And then pop that and go in this way. And I'm going to take it to the edge. Now, when I am tacking my roving in, I am slightly overlapping one and the other. See how this 
is overlapping there and it needs to be tacked in overlap. What will happen if you do not overlap is you are actually going to have your piece fall apart when you pour the boiling water over it at the end. And I will show you that so you can see what will happen. You do not want to take your roving and tack it in like this. See this white area here? What will happen is this will felt and this will felt, but they won't felt together. So when you actually dissolve the paper, you're going to get one long felted rope, and that's not what we want. We want a finished piece of material. So we need to take our roving, and we need to overlap it, and we need to make sure that it is overlapped quite well. There we go. And I'll show you in a second how you can actually tell in another way. I can see a little bit of white there. So I'm going to fix that in a minute. I'm going to be very thorough on my corners to make sure that I'm getting into my corners. And it looks like right here I've run out. So we're just going to leave this blank for a minute. We might fill it in with something else. This is a perfect example here. That corner we're going to have to do a little thicker. Notice how this is spread out a little bit more than here. This is a little bit denser and that's just due to the way I laid it down and tacked it in. Um, will it make a difference in felting? Not too much on such a small piece. If I had a large piece it would. So I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm one of those types of people that doesn't really spend too much time fixing mistakes. I try to incorporate them in what I do. So we are going to do another mitered corner on this side. So we're going to start and we're going to tack in the roving here. And then we're going to take this down here. And we're just really going to make sure we get that corner tacked in. And put this down here. We're going to go right up the black line and we're going to make sure that this overlaps so that it's touching it. Come down here. And this little corner needs to be tacked in. This is going to be a little bit smaller of a triangle than the other side. And that's okay too. bit of white in there. So what we'll do, we've got all this tacked in, let's get that tacked in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this off our tack board and what we have below here is our um, our art felt tack board which I prefer to use for several reasons. Number one, it's self-healing. So each time I poke a needle in there, it heals itself. And number two, it holds your work in place while you're you're actually doing your tacking. Once you start tacking it, your roving actually gets put into the board, and so it holds it in place and prevents it from moving. So you have to peel it off a little bit, and now you can see what the back looks like. All those little tufts of roving are what are holding it into place. And on the paper, and the paper is what is going to hold it into place when you do your felting. Now if I would turn it upside down and hold it up to a light, what I would want to look for is light coming through these little areas here. If light comes through these little areas, that means that I actually have space in between there and it's not going to felt together. Like I was saying, you're going to have holes or you're going to have just felted rope. You're not going to have a solid piece. So that I do want to watch out for. So now we're going to finish our mitered corners, our triangles. And uh, we're going to start in this one right here. I'm just going to finish it with another color just so it's slightly different, not too different. And I'm going to pull my roving apart. Now as I pull, if I pull very close together, I can't get it apart. But if I hold my fingers far apart, it comes apart very, very easily. So I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to just yep, fill in this little hole. Now, it looks a little messy at this point, but I'll tell you, once it's felted, it looks totally different. Okay. Actually, we're just going to fill this little hole in like that. 
Um, now, if you are, once more, a perfectionist, <laughs> you can make all these lines perfectly straight and so on. I am not, and so I don't. That is just a matter of choice. I'm going to tack in a little bit more so it looks a little bit more even um, around the edges. There we go. And then on this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to actually tack this in this way so it goes closer to that black line. And we have a little bit more of a straighter line. And I'll get my edges a little more. And then we're going to fill the middle of this with just a little bit of green. We have some solid green here. And we're going to create ourselves a little triangle and green. On the edges, let's try something different so it looks a little different. Um, on the edges, we're going to do some circles. So we're going to start, and we're going to start one circle right here. Now, make sure once more that you are overlapping your roving as you go along. But do not pull it too tight. If I pulled it like this and tack it in, what's going to happen is I'm going to create what I like to refer to as Madonna cones. When I felt it, the outer side, the outside is going to felt tighter than the inside and it's going to create a cone. And sort of reminiscent of the cones that Madonna wore in the 80s. That's what we call them Madonna cones. Um, if you weren't born in the 80s, well, I guess you can, you can, <laughs> you can Google it. <laughs> Anyways, um, try to overlap, but notice how I lay this, now there we go, that's getting a little tight. Um, I lay it down next to it and overlap it without pulling it tight. So, there we go. Okay, so we're hitting my square over there. do we'll just have our circle overlap the square just a little bit. Okay. So now we still have some area to fill in and to give it a little bit of contrast, we'll use this blue. And we will start why don't we start over here? Notice that right there? White. Don't want white. So we're going to pull it up. And we're going to move it over here. Okay. And once more, I'm going to go just a little bit over the square. And right here, because I want to um, have it end right there, I'm actually going to take scissors. It's going to be hard to pull it right there and make it perfectly straight. So I'll take it and so that will overlap. One circle. And I'm going to start over here again. And because I'd like it really nice in this one little spot, cut there again. You actually could do this whole project without any scissors at all. Um, another way to get a nice edge, you can go like this. It's not going to go all the way in there. But at the end, you can just take all your edges and snip them off like that as well. I've got this little bit here. I'm not going to make it go to waste. I'm actually going to put it in there. Okay, so I still got some little corners here, and now I'm sort of like, hmm, what do I do next? Uh, we've got some area here, so let's use another color. 
And remember, we've got a whole nother cuff to do because we have enough in here for two cuffs. So we've got two separate ones here and we can do some stripes. Now, stripes get a little bit trickier. You do want to make sure that they're overlapping. Now let's get in a little bit of purple and green with our stripes as well. And make sure they go over my square. Actually cut these. There we go. And then I'm gonna come over here. They're all nicely laid down. I'm gonna do some stripes here. I'm gonna go in this direction. Now I do need to make sure that they all overlap. That's very important. And if you notice here, it's not. So what do I do? I just pull it up and I can put it back down again. And I think maybe we'll just overlap a little here too, because it's a little thin there. There we go, and this will give us a nice edge against our square. And we can do that there, and if I want some green, just go right there. And as long as I'm overlapping, I'm going to be okay. This edge here looks cruddy. There we go. basically have the whole piece covered with the exception of here. And you can actually leave that. What will happen is in the end this paper will dissolve and when you have your cuff this little area would be you would just simply have a rounded corner. Um, makes a nice little detail, design detail. Probably didn't do the greatest job planning having the square here because this will cover up over there and then the square will show. But you could do it so that the square comes up over this as well. Lots of different ways to do it. Um, and we can fill it in. So what we are going to do at this point is we are going to fill this one in entirely even though it's not absolutely necessary. We've got these tiny little sections here to fill in. and. one for not cutting if I don't need to. Actually, you know what we'll do is we're going to start on this side because this is a little bit thin on that edge. There we go. Do that. There we go. Actually still have too much there, so I'm actually going to use the scissors. And pack that in. And 
now, if we look on the back, and if I would hold it up to the light, I wouldn't want to see little white areas coming through. This is all very well tacked in, so I don't think we're going to have any issues with it not felting together. Um, so this piece is now ready to go to the felting process. Okay, so we're moving on to cuff number two. We've got our paper laid out, and this time what we're going to do is we're going to do some circles in different colors so that we have a little bit of a, a more circular pattern. I think you can see it on this one. We've got some circles going here and then a little bit of patterning that goes around it. And notice on this cuff too, it is not totally even. We have edges that are a little rough and so on. If you want to, you can even do fringed edges. And on this one, we actually have a, um, oh, look at that, a Scassell logo. How did that get in there? Uh, <laughs> If you notice, it has little curved edges on the ends, so uh, it does not have to be perfectly straight. And some people always wonder, well, if you're doing a coffee cozy, why are you doing a straight piece? When we are finishing this, if you take your wet piece and you put it on your cup and you let it dry on your cup, it's actually going to dry in the shape of your cup. That's exactly what it does, and felt is so wonderful in that way. So let's um, let's actually, we've got a little of lavender here, or I guess it's more of a lavendery gray. So we're going to create a circle. Eh, let's just, let's do it right here um, in the lavender gray. There we go. And I'm going to peel it off. You can see what the back looks like. And as I peeled it, some of this I noticed wasn't quite tacked on the paper. So I'm going to try to tack it into the edge. There we go. And for those of you who are perfectionists, you're right. This edge is not totally smooth. It's going to give you a little bit of an edge like you can see right here. It's going to be a little bit uneven. If you wanted your edge totally smooth, then you do have to make it totally smooth when you actually lay down your rolling. So then I would suggest doing an edge around the old, the whole outside and then filling on the inside and then you would have a totally smooth edge to go. So now we actually have two separate cups, both of them, which are ready to go on to the next step and felt.
for projects this small, it's ideal to use um, a lasagna pan or a shallow pan with a towel in the bottom and a lot of water. And you can see that this is standing water. It's very, um, very wet down there. And we want to get these pieces totally saturated. If you're using a larger piece, you can use a spray pump bottle, um, like this one that we've gotten from the local hardware store. So for now, we're going to get this piece wet. And the way I would do it is um, you can do it side by side, do them like this, or one before the other. And I'm going to try that way. Um, so you lay it paper side down on the wet towel, and then you cover it with the plastic. And you allow yourself a little bit of plastic at the end because we're going to use um, a rolled up towel in the other end, or rather, um, in this case, I'm going to use a piece of uh, bubble wrap, and I'm going to roll the bubble wrap up so that it acts as a something round just to keep it from crimping at the end. So we're going to set it down there and start rolling around that with the plastic between it. But you do want to make sure that you press this down completely first, and if you can see how the colors get more vibrant as they get totally saturated. That's what we're looking for. So we start rolling this piece, carefully pick up the paper, and the paper tends to look like it disappears, it becomes translucent, which means it's completely soaked, and that's good. Keep pressing down, and drawing this toward yourself, keep pressing down, make sure that your plastic stays fairly straight, which I think I haven't. Let's get that fixed right now. Don't roll it too tightly, <clears throat> but just enough to um, keep it flat. And then we're going to start with the next one. You don't necessarily want, in fact, you don't want them touching because you don't want them to felt together, but we're going to have these a couple of inches apart. Start getting this one wet. and rolling this up. And you want to make sure that your piece of plastic is longer than your piece that you're rolling up, whether it's side by side or end to end like this. Had this been a shorter piece of plastic, I certainly could have rolled them up and, you know, side by side would have been um, just as successful. So you make sure it's totally saturated. And roll this up, and you just keep rolling until you run out of plastic. You want to make sure that plastic completely covers the end, because you do not want it to um, stick to itself or to anything else. Then we take a stocking, a regular knee-high nylon stocking, and we're going to grab one end of this and pull this over, and tie a slip knot as close to the end of your roll as possible, like that, and then we're going to throw it into the dryer for 15 minutes. When it comes out of the dryer, we're going to take a look at it, see what it looks like. Be right back. Here we are back with the Coffee Cozy cups after the first 15 minutes in the dryer, and we're going to see what we have. <clears throat> Okay, that's pretty good. Right off the bat, I think you can see that this is a bit narrower than this. That's because this was closest to the outside of the roll and it agitated the most, so it felted faster. So we're going to put them back in the dryer because they still aren't quite done. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the roving does not really want to stay together. If I were to use my fingernail, it would. Um, I could tear it apart easily, so we don't want that to happen. And here again, this is much bigger than this one. So what we're going to do is the same thing, only this time we're going to work from the opposite end. This time, the smaller pieces, the smaller sections are going to be <clears throat> closer to the end. Excuse me, the larger sections are going to be closer to the end, and they'll have a chance to agitate more and felt a bit faster. But we're going to do the same thing again for another 15 minutes.
start rolling. And I'm not rolling them too tightly, just enough to keep them neat and flat. This one especially um, is very loose, so we want this to agitate enough to felt. And again, the plastic is perfectly long enough to roll completely up. And we're going to put it back in the same stocking for another 15 minutes. And then we'll see what we have at the end of that. We're back again after the second time in the dryer for 15 minutes. With our <clears throat> coffee coasters, excuse me, coffee cozies or cuffs. And now you can see that these are much smaller. This one still is a little wider here, and this one is a little wider here, but they're considerably more felted. If you see the back, you can see hopefully that they're kind of um, puckered. The paper is puckering on the back, and that's a good sign. That means that these are felting well. What I'm going to do now, and it's probably the last step, is that I'm going to put them in a plastic bag without the rolled up plastic. Just throw them in like this, and I'm going to put them in for five minutes only. And then we'll see what happens. It's What it's going to do is it's going to kind of snug these up and just finish off the felting. Um, I will be back in five minutes. After a <clears throat> short five minutes back in the dryer inside a plastic bag, we're going to take a look and see what's happened. You can tell by the bag that this, these were still very, very wet. And now they are considerably smaller. Actually, they're also very, very wet. So I'm going to just squeeze them out a bit so that I can work with them a bit better. And the colors tend to pop a bit more. So here we have our two <clears throat> coffee cozies or cuffs. Okay, our water is about to boil and I'm going to go ahead and dissolve the paper from the back of our coffee cozies or our cuffs. Um, I'm using a bowl in the sink rather than the sink. Uh, you can do either. I'm going to let these sit for just a little bit and they're so small I'm not going to use a whole pot of water. But you do want to make sure that they're completely, the paper is completely dissolved. And when the, the color starts to change, you want to put a stop to that because you don't want to bleed the colors in your piece. And you do want to rinse them very, very well. Make sure you get all the starch from that paper out. Okay, here are our two pieces. Once the paper is gone, you can stretch them quite a bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and pin this on the mug and let it dry that way to help shape it. That's one of them. And I'll keep working that. This is the other one. So I'll figure out which way I would like them to be on the mug and then I will um, pin them in place and let them dry. And if I were to turn these into cuffs, I could do the same, dry them, and then decide where I want my button or my clasp, and there we go. Okay, we are here to finish off the cuff and the coffee cozy, and I would like to just show you how to do that. The coffee cozy is going to need to fit around whatever mug that you use or coffee cup that you use. Um, so in this case it's going to be like this. I'm going to use a button that you may have seen earlier. It's going to be really bright yellow. It will pick up the yellow in this and I'm just going to sew it together. Um, you find the spacing that you want and I'm finding the, the back piece that I want, which is right here. 
I'm going to sew my button on that. You want to catch the thread because the felt will allow that thread to just come straight back through. It's not, um, unless you make a really, really big knot in your thread or you're using yarn, um, that knot is going to go straight through the felt. So make sure that you catch your, your, your thread that you're sewing with. And I'm not going to take too many stitches just because I want to show you how I'm doing this and get it back on the mug. Sewing is not my forte, I have to say. Um, I'd much rather be making felted pieces. So, I'm going to tighten that up and take another quick little stitch just to bury the thread a bit and then cut that off. Now, if I want this to be something that I could also wear on my wrist, as well as on my coffee mug, we need to cut a buttonhole. And the thing about felt is that you don't need to sew it because it will not fray. So there's our buttonhole. I'm going to go ahead and button it this way and then fit it back on my mug. I make it a little bit smaller than the button just so that it will not open accidentally. But there we have a coffee cozy. Okay. Now for the purposes of the cuff, if we want to do the other piece as an actual cuff that you can wear, we can do the exact same thing. Um, and this time I can use one of those toggles. I'm going to make sure it's snug enough on me. I have fairly small wrists. But I'm going to put that bright red toggle or maybe yellow. Actually, this one has red, so let's see. I'm thinking the red one right there. Just for a pop of color against that green. It has two pieces. It has the piece that goes on the back and it has the piece that goes on the front. So I am going to just cut this, but very, very tiny. Just a little nip. Just enough to get me a little tiny hole to put that through. And I put the large piece on the outside. And through that, through that hole, so that it comes through like this. Whoops, and then I dropped it. Okay, and then the other part is going to go through the bottom. So I want to put another little nip right cool. there. I'm going to put that through as well. Okay, can you see that they both come through? This is a jewel closure that's really nice. This other part goes on the back, that's the smaller, and it holds everything in place. They're like um, washers. And these actually screw on, and there we go. Now, I could make this, because it's really snug, I can wear it like that, I kind of like that, or, if I want to be able to take it on and off easily, I can actually cut a buttonhole on the top. And I will do that um, just to show you. I'm going to take this all apart again. I actually do this here on this side. Then I'm going to cut a very, I always want to cut smaller than you think you're going to need because you can make them bigger, but in order to make them smaller, you're going to have to stitch them. And really, you don't need to stitch felt because it will, okay, that is a bit small. So I'll do a little bit more. There we go. And there we go. It's buttoned. Now the reason I cut the buttonhole lengthwise for this is because it will allow that button to pull if it needs to without opening it up. If I had cut the, the buttonhole across, then as this got pulled, it would pull open that buttonhole. This way it keeps the button clo buttonhole closed. You can see the end of it right there, but by pulling on this direction it keeps it closed. So, there we go. 
we have a cuff, we have a coffee cozy, and that is the way to do those kits. Thank you for joining us.